Hello, this is LJ Bothell, and this video is about looking at the zip file process. The information in here should work regardless of whether you're on a Windows machine, a Mac operating system, or any other operating system that's on a standard personal computer. What we're going to do is we're going to use something called 7-Zip. It used to be that Microsoft Windows, for instance, had a free built-in zip zipping program called WinZip. I believe, and now you can buy it. Uh, you can apparently download it and use it free for a short period of time, and then you need to buy it. I'm not a fan of expecting learners uh, in school or anywhere else to have to pay for a bunch of different things to get through the class. So I recommend the free tool WinZip, which seems to work with pretty much any computer system and has three or four different zip formats. Uh, so let's take a look at it. We're going to look at it from two aspects. We're going to look at it from working inside of your standard file manager program and using it there. And then we'll look at it from the actual WinZip interface because people will tend to approach a program in more than one way. So let's start with getting into our file manager program, which in Windows is the File Explorer. And I've referenced, referenced this in another video or tool. I'm going to go ahead and go uh, into a pre-created directory that I've made to mimic the idea of what you could do for schoolwork. So for instance, here, this is a potential school directory a person could create with a couple of courses that they have. And then within a course, the types of folders they might need for doing their assignments and such. And we're going into a folder called data files over here. And in here, we'll look at one of these folders from inside the win, uh, from the um, 7 zip, it should be named 7 zip, 7 zip interface. And the other one we'll look at from here. Now, you may receive a zip file from somebody. So, how do you get into it? Well, the neat thing is, is with WinZip and with the um, Windows Explorer, you can actually just double click. You can copy a couple of the files like this, and I'm going to use Control Z, uh, Control C to copy. Then I'm going to step back a directory and use Control V to paste. And now I have a couple of these files here from the examples. They are also still in the zip file, but oops, but they are here now. For some reason, my view changed. So let's go over here and make sure I'm going back to the details. There we go. So that is how you could get files out of a zip file. In addition, and I'm going to go ahead and just select these two and use my delete key. I'm going to go back to the examples here and right click on it. And I can use extract all. And this is offered because there is a zip file utility in the computer. There wouldn't really be an extract file option if I didn't have one. It will give me a chance to tell it where I want it to go. And here is where we are. We are in School Course 1 Data Files, and this reads School Course 1 Data Files Examples. It's creating a subfolder for me. I don't actually want the subfolder. You might, but I like to have the actual zip files show up in the same folder that the zip file itself is in. What? Oh, sorry, I don't want to browse. I've already selected what I want, and I need to pull it up and say extract. So this is what I mean. I like to have the files where the zip file is, and then I might make another folder later to put my zip files in a different location. But these are all the files that were in the zip file, but meanwhile, I could click in the zip file, and the files are still there. So you want to, unless the zip file is huge, you might want to keep a copy of this so if for some reason you actually overwrite one of the other files and can't recover the original, you can get it from the zip file. So that's a tip. Now, what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to get rid of this zip file. I'm going to click on it and hit the delete, and now I have these files. Because the other option here is how do you zip files? If you're a student or you're in the workplace, someone may say, hey, could you zip up a bunch of these files for me in this directory and then email it to whoever. The idea of a zip file is it is like a big package. You could put everything in the package and just send one package instead of every file separately. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the files, click one, hold my shift key down on a PC, click the bottom file, it will select them all, or I can press my cursor down and drag up like this. You could use that in other programs, by the way. 
And then I'm going to right click and I want to use 7-zip and I want to add to archive. 7-zip basically considers its files, whether it's a zip file, a 7z file, or a tar file as an archive. You're archiving these files into one single file. Add to archive. And we'll open this tool up within the file manager uh, reference here. So right now, here's what I've got. I need to, first off, let's take a look. We are in here, and it wants to create a new file for me, and it's going to call it data files. It's decided to default on this because, or use this as a default name, rather, because it's in a directory that's already called data files. I could change it to anything I want. And if you saw the other video on file management practices, this is a good time to think about the file naming protocol you want to use. So pretending that this is my student data files for a bunch of students, I could rename it student data files. Now that's the one of two main things you need to think about here. You see all these other fields, you don't need to worry about them. The only thing you need to worry about when adding to an archive is what you want to name your file and what the archive format is going to be. Right now it's zip because I've been zipping files and I use zip, which is common for Windows. There are four of them this offers. 7z is proprietary to 7zip. Now even though 7zip is free, what happens if you send a 7z file to somebody who doesn't have 7zip? They probably can't open it. So don't use it. <laughs> Tar, I believe, is one of them that can be used on a Mac. I'm not sure what WIM is for. You could look that one up. But um, I use zip. And as an instructor, whenever I ask students to send me a file, it's always a zip file, dot zip. So you need to use the archive name, create a name for it, and you need to put it in archive format zip. The only reason you might want to use this encryption area of a password is if you've specifically got somebody else that has asked you to send them an encrypted zip. Don't do this to your instructors unless your instructor specifically asks for a specific assignment, but don't do it. Your instructors don't have time to actually go in and realize they can't open your file to assess your work for you on time you know, when the deadline is, is up and don't have time to wait for you to send another copy of the file. So no, no. But this is really useful if you're sending it, say, to a friend who's sharing a computer with two or three other users and you want the zip file <coughs> of pictures to get to just them, then only they can open it. That's a good example. So here we are, named. Archive format zip, hit OK, and now we have a new zip file. And if you double click it, it's got all the same files in it. And you can, upon that, decide to get rid of the files that are in here. Oops, except for that one. That's up to you. OK, for the second part of this, we're going to use this other folder, but not from here. I'm going to exit our File Explorer, come down to our Windows Start button, and search for 7-zip because I want to open this up from the 7-zip actual interface if you're not in the file manager. And in here, you basically can open files where you can go find things. So first you want to open a file, right? You need to go find out where it is. And right now it's actually already set here to where I was, the school folder. So we're in course one, we're going to go to data files. And what we want to do is get into the 4-7-zip interface, which apparently has nothing in it. Okay, so I paused, stepped away, and went and found the file I thought I had put in here. Here we are in WinZip's own interface, and we have examples.zip. If you double-click it, you can see in these. But unlike in the, uh, uh, the File Explorer, you can't just drag things around in here. It's very literal of a program. So you could come here where you see the breadcrumbs of where you are, and just next to it, you can click up to go to the, the level above. Here we are at the zip file. What we want to do is we want to extract. Click Extract and pay attention to where it's going. It's going to Course 1, Data Files, 4-7-zip interface, which is the folder we're in, but it wants to create another folder called examples. You could decide to do that, but I don't want it there. So I'm going to click this. 
or take that off. Now note here, if this was an encrypted zip file, then it would ask you for a password. So I'm going to click OK, and there are my files. Now, here's something I'm going to do. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to get rid of Need More Files Text and lorem ipsum text. I'm going to click them both, and then I can just delete them from inside the zip file. So now the zip file itself is missing two files. I'm going to go up a level, and it's like, oh no, wait, I want to put the lorem ipsum back in there. This is where things get a little bit fun, so let's pay attention. I'm going to make sure I click the lorem ipsum text file that I want, and I want to add it to this. You'd think it'd be simple, but it takes a couple of steps. Click Add you'll get the interface. What I want to do, is, what this wants to do is say, hey, I've got a file and I want to archive it. I'm going to make my very own interface, uh, excuse me, my own, uh, my very own archive just for that file. No! <laughs> Next, I might say, no, no, I want to go look and see what we've got up here. Now, I may have several things up here, but it's getting a little bit confusing and it won't actually help what I want to make sure we pay attention to is update mode. In the case of adding a file into an existing archive or file, we need to go to update mode and note update and add files. And then from there is when you go look to see what's relevant. And what we want to do is we want to go to examples zip that happens to be in the proper folder. So we are here, school. Course one, data files for seven zip interface. So we want the same thing. School, course one, data files. We don't want this one because it's not in the four seven whip, uh, uh, zip interface. We want one that says it is. Mm -hmm. Examples, 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 need more files. Now, this is interesting. Okay, so what the problem we're facing here is that we've got all sorts of things that have been in play before, and this is not going to work for us. Right here. You get this three little dots, you can click this, and then you can go look. So right now, say we were in the data files, and we wanted to get into 4.7-zip interface, and we wanted this file. Then we would click this, we hit open, and then this is where we're going to go. School, course one data files for 7-zip interface. We want the file we just clicked, Lorem Ipsum, to go into the example zip. We want to update the existing zip file and add files to it. Click OK. Now we see a little flickering on the screen, but what happened? There's the Lorem Ipsum file. So <laughs> that is, I think, the basics that you need to know from working with 7-zip. Again, it's a free program. Free is good. Take care. See you again in the future.